Have you heard the device to let you hack anything? I'm sure you have. From changing gas station signs to open up tester charge ports, the capabilities of this hacking device know no end. But what would it do in the hands of a trained professional or a malicious actor? Hello and welcome. That's what we're looking at in today's video. In the past six months, Flippa Zero has caused quite a frenzy due to its amazing capabilities. It could unlock doors and infiltrate secure systems with ease. It has caused many to panic, and it has also been a helpful tool for some people. The Flippa Zero can read and act like NFC RFID, infrared and eye button gadgets right out of the box. Worse still, it can read and imitate sub gigahertz frequencies, which are used in things like garage doors, car keys, motion sensors, doorbells, and more. Interestingly, People have been finding themselves in unexpected situations due to Flippa Zero's sub gigahertz transceiver function. This particular feature enables it to interact with devices operating in these frequency bands, such as garage doors, car keys, motion sensors, and doorbells. Some individuals have used it to tamper with gas lines, manipulate locks and gates, and even trigger unanticipated announcements over Walgreens customer service systems. It's clear that the Flipper Zero sub gigahertz capabilities have practical implications in the real world. The Flipper Zero's description highlights its use of the Texas Instrument CC1101 to manage sub gigahertz communications. It's noteworthy that this chip has been available since at least 2007 and can be purchased on Amazon for a relatively low cost, often below $25, complete with an antenna breakout board and free shipping. This accessibility raises an important question. Is it problematic that almost anyone with a cursory understanding of these technologies can potentially manipulate systems like petrol station signs? If there's a wireless device, this thing will find a way to attack it, mess it up, or even turn into it. Sounds worrying, right? But does it really pose a threat to society, or is everyone's panic just a reaction from people who don't know much about it? You will discover the difference between dangerous clickbait lies and the truth when we're done with Flipper Zero. In April 2023, Amazon took a drastic step by prohibiting the sale to Flip a Zero on its platform, citing concerns that it could be used for illegal activities like card skimming. As a result, the product vanished from Amazon's listings, leaving only Wi-Fi development boards, screen protectors, and cases for purchase. Amazon has specific policies against credit card skimmers, and apparently, the ability to read any data from tap to pay cards was enough to trigger those rules. According to Bleeping Computer, Amazon sent notices to third-party sellers explaining the situation and informing them that the item in question was a card-skimming device. Amazon policy prohibits the sale or listing of card-skimming devices. We took this action because this product is not permitted for sale on Amazon.com. It is your obligation to make sure the products you offer comply with all applicable laws, regulations, and Amazon's policies. Now again, while the Flipper Zero can pull an alarming amount of information from a tap-to-pay card, it's nothing any other RFID NFC reader like this could pull, and you'd still need the actual card on hand to make any purchases. That worry could be avoided if tap-to-pay cards work similarly to iPhones and Android phones. Those devices pass along one-time use data wirelessly. Even if it's intercepted, it's useless data that won't accomplish anything. But it's Amazon stores, and they get to set the rules. Brazil also witnessed an alarming development regarding the Flipper Zero in the same year. Customers who ordered the device in Brazil discovered that Anatel, the country's telecommunications agency, had intercepted their shipment. Anatel raised concerns about the Flipper Zero's potential use for illicit purposes, complicating the certification process for these devices. Despite users' efforts to get their Flipper Zero certified, they faced obstacles in doing so. The Electronic Frontier Foundation EFF, criticized Anatel's action arguing that such seizures impeded legitimate cybersecurity research in Brazil. Moreover, in August of 2023, the Daily Dot reported on a bulletin circulated among police officers by the South Dakota Fusion Center. The bulletin raised concerns that far-right extremists might employ the Flipper Zero to bypass access control systems, especially at power stations. It's worth knowing that the bulletin acknowledged a lack of concrete evidence regarding these extremists' intentions to use the device, but mention their express interest in online forums. When Flipper CEO Pavel Zahona was shown a copy of this bulletin, he asserted that Flipper Zero was intensely designed not to interfere with mon access control systems. He further highlighted that the bulletin itself stated that newer gates at power stations were not inherently vulnerable to the device, suggesting that the concerns were primarily associated with older systems. However, in the US, owning a Flipper Zero is legal as is its use. 
While the Flipper Zero itself is a legitimate product and has valid use cases, using it for illegal activities, such as hacking into a computer system, unauthorized access to networks, or other malicious actions would likely be illegal. Just like a hammer is a legitimate tool, unless you use it to break into someone's home. If you're asking whether or not the Flipper Zero is a hacker device that shouldn't be sold, the answer to that question at best is confusing. However, if you're interested in knowing more, click the like button to continue the video. Come on, we'll wait. Awesome. Nothing that Flipper Zero does could be considered criminal under current laws. What you do with these capabilities is what determines whether or not they are used in a legal or criminal manner. It's not against the law to unlock a door. It is against the law to unlock the door of another person's home without their permission. This is the case regardless of whether you unlock that lock with a digital gadget, traditional lockpick, or even keys. The same thing is true for the vast majority of Flipper Zero skills. In fact, the Flipper Zero is not capable of anything really innovative. The hardware that the Flipper Zero uses is easy to obtain and can be purchased with no effort. You can build your own custom Flipper Zero. The only thing that would be different is the absence of the cyber dolphin that yells at you for not hacking stuff frequently enough. The obstacle to admission is what makes this situation unique, however. Find the parts for, building, and programming your own device that can intercept car key fob signals or emulate hotel key cards used to be more difficult. Even in the past, when you could purchase a device that accomplished all of that, you had to do so through a questionable black market. The Flipper Zero reduces the difficulty of entering the competition. It costs less than 200 bucks, can be altered to perform more tasks, and there is a community of people who are ready and prepared to instruct you on how to make the most out of using it. Even if you don't have any practical experience with scripting, you can install scripts that were built specifically for you on GitHub. Locate the one that fulfills your requirements, then download and install it. In concept, the Flipper Zero is a tool and the individual who employs it is a villain. The simplicity of Flipper Zero's operation makes it easier to execute illegal crimes in practice. This facilitates the platform's potential for abuse. You may make the case that the person who uses the tool is the one who is responsible, or that certain tools shouldn't be so easily accessible. In either scenario, Flipper Zero has done an excellent job of shedding light on the widespread vulnerabilities that exist in our day-to-day -day lives. If those vulnerabilities aren't patched, then the debate won't matter much either way. Please take a moment before we wrap up to share your thoughts on this incredible narrative in the form of a comment below. Your ideas are very helpful to us. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you will get all the fascinating news that we post on security and hacking. If you want to see another interesting story, check out our other videos. You won't want to miss any of these stories. Thanks for coming along with us on this interesting trip through hacking and defense. Stay safe.